Oh, hi, Betty. Hi, Wilma. Do you have time to hear a pitch for my client, Tracy Dion? Well, I'm scheduled for a colonoscopy in, oh, 15 minutes, so... Sure! A colonoscopy? Is everything okay? Oh, yes. I sat on a plate of pickles. You know how that goes. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, here's the pitch. It's a novel called Legend Board. It's a contemporary urban fantasy inspired by Arthurian legend. Oh, let me guess. King Arthur's born in modern times. No, not exactly. The main character is a young black woman named Bree who just started college. Let's put a pin in that for a moment. Does she have to be black? Why? But could she be Asian? Asians are in these days. Really? Meh. Well, Brie has just started college, but she's having trouble dealing with the fact that her mother just died. Dead parent. Good, good, good. Now, what's the conflict? Well, Brie sees a monster which is attacked by some students and then a Merlin tries to erase her memories. Oh, so there is Merlin. No, a Merlin. Merlin is a title rather than a name. Well, there may have been an original Merlin, but his descendants are just called Merlins. So, then there are Arthurs and Lancelots and Gawains and... No, no, the students who attack the monster are in a secret society called the Legendborn and are descendants of the Knights of the Round Table. They are referred to as being of the line of Arthur or of the line of Gawain. So why aren't the descendants of Merlin of the line of Merlin? Who knows? But Merlins are special since they can use magic, and it's a way of distinguishing them from the descendants of the Knights of the Round Table. Good, good. So Bree joins the legend board, right? Right. Well, not right away. You see, seeing the fight with the monster unlocks memories of seeing a Merlin, a different Merlin, at the hospital the night her mother died. I thought her memories were wiped. They were. That's the interesting mystery. Why is she immune to Merlin magic and why can she smell magic? Oh, so she can smell magic. Didn't I mention that? Yeah, the young Merlin who removed her memories is named Selwyn Kane and his magic smells like cinnamon and whiskey. Oh, fireball whiskey reminds me of college. <laughs> right, and Selwyn is extremely suspicious of Brie since she keeps showing up during supernatural events. So is Selwyn Kane the bad guy? Well, he's more of a bad boy. Ooh. And the legend born who befriends Brie is Nick Davis, who is from the line of Lancelot. And let me guess, he's a hot blonde guy. How'd you know? Lucky guess. Well, what do you think so far? Well, since Brie is black, how do you resolve the fact that the Arthurian legend is so uh, Western? What do you mean? White. I mean, it is very white. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But that's what's amazing about this story. It delves into not only modern racial issues and interactions, especially in relation to being in South Carolina, but it also addresses the history of Blacks in America and the subjugation of their cultural roots. In fact, speaking of roots, root is a- Okay, okay, I think I got it, but here is what I am thinking. Yes? This needs to be a young adult book. Did I mention that this takes place when Brie is in college? You want to change that to high school? 
No, no, it can stay in college. But if it's YA, won't the age thing... Well, we'll keep Bree at 16 years old. Why would there be a 16-year-old in college? And because it's young adult, we need romance. I take it there's a big romance with Nick. Yes, yes there is. But if Nick is in college and he's college age and Bree is 16, won't that be a little problematic? We'll just keep Nick 18 or younger. Let's say he's 17, no biggie. Okay. And you mentioned Selwyn is a bad boy. We love a bad boy. And since this is YA, there has to be a love triangle. Does there? Yes, it is required. So, Selwyn, another college boy, I take it will be under 18 as well. Well, we could make him 18. That still falls under most Romeo and Juliet laws. But just as long as everyone is hot. Oh, everyone is hot. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Super hot. Sexy times 10. Yeah. And readers will have to choose between either Team Jacob or Team Edward. You mean Team Nick or Team Selwyn? Whatever, and make sure there are gays. People go crazy for the gay stuff these days. There is by representation, and Gawain is gay. Oh, and have you thought of audiobooks? No. I have this great narrator in mind, someone who can really do great southern accents, and she went to the William Shatner School of Acting. Great! The what school of acting? The William Shatner School of Acting. You know, when you make long pauses for dramatic effect. Wouldn't that get a little tiring to listen to? Well, you could always speed up an audiobook. Okay, fans of Legendborn, please forgive me for this. Here's the thing. I found this hilarious pitch meeting videos on YouTube by Screen Rant, that's for movies, and I'll link the channel below, because they are hilarious. So it gave me this idea of doing book reviews in the form of elevator pitches. And I actually did enjoy Legendborn, and guess what? It gets my blessing. Legendborn is an interesting twist on the Arthurian legend that I haven't seen done before, and I loved the Black experience that Tracy Dion incorporated throughout the story. However, it is a YA book, and even though it's set in college, there's a lot of YA tropes, like there's a strong romance component, including a love triangle, at least the beginning of one. We'll find out more in the sequel but take that for what it's worth. If you want to see more elevator pitches, please give this video a thumbs up or give it a thumbs down if you don't want to see more. And don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already and hit that notification bell. Until we meet again, may all the books you read be blessed.